called your mother so John comes and says to us that we are his brothers and if we are his brothers then the Holy Mother is our mother as well if she is the mother of John and John is our brother then the Holy Mother is our mother and the commandment says respect your father and mother in order to be blessed and given a long and abundant life well blessed is the soul that respects and venerates the Holy Mother and blessed is the soul that does the will of my father as Jesus Christ said and um, blessed is the one who walks in the way of the Lord Jesus for there is no other way but him amen all right so our topic today is a continuation from the gospel according to Saint Matthew uh, today we'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 to 12 inclusive so it is Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 to 12 inclusive blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Okay, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about the gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 5 and we took it from verse 1 and today we'll be, God willing, finishing verse 12. We said the Lord Jesus, after seeing the multitudes, he went up on this mountain, he sat down, the disciples came closer to him and he opened his mouth and started with the nine blessings which he gave on that mountain which we call the Mount of Beatitudes and is also called by the church fathers the second Mount Sinai of the New Testament just like God gave the commandments the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai in the Old Testament the Mount of Beatitudes is the Mount Sinai of the New Testament the Lord Jesus begins we said he said, Be, um, blessed are the poor in spirit. This was the first blessing the Lord Jesus spoke of. Blessed are the poor in spirit. We said, poor in spirit, you need to come to the Lord as poor, i.e. empty. Come to the Lord empty in order for the Lord to fill you up with his Holy Spirit. If I come full and I say to the Lord, I'm good for you, I've done this and I've done that, I've brought people to you, I changed people toward you, I built churches for you, I expanded your kingdom, what is the Lord going to do for me? Nothing, I'm already coming full. But when I come and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I'm empty, I'm blind, I'm weak, I'm a piece of wreck, I'm good for nothing, then the Lord will begin working in me. The Lord is saying, this is the kind of a person I'm looking for to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm not looking for saints, I'm looking for sinners, not saints. So when I come poor, empty he'll fill me up when he fills me up with his holy spirit what will happen the second blessing blessed are those who mourn when i'm filled by the holy spirit i am enlightened by the light of the world when the light of the world enlightens me he will reveal all my mistakes all my sins all my wrongdoings I will see every single moment I've hurt the Lord with I'll begin to mourn I'll begin to cry for every sin I committed against the love of my life every moment I broke his heart I will cry for it every moment I walked away from him I cried for it every moment I sold him with 30 pieces of silver I cried for it I mourned for all the wrong things which have offended my Jesus the love of my life when I mourned the third the third blessing blessed are the meek 
meek we said are those who put all their trust in the Lord invest everything in the Lord safe custody we called it safe custody I put the most precious thing I have in a safe custody in the hands of the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth where no one can snatch anything out of his hand and the most expensive thing I have is my spirit when I entrust him with my spirit I am meek ie I begin to trust the Lord when I trust the Lord the fourth blessing will come when I become thirsty and hungry for righteousness. When I begin to trust the Lord, I'll begin doing all the good deeds that make Jesus happy. I'll start pleasing the Lord. I'll become hungry and thirsty for the things that make the Lord happy, pleases Him. And the more I become hungry and thirsty for righteousness, the Lord is fixing me up, is filling me up, is changing me more and more, and He'll give me the fifth blessing, blessed are the merciful. <sighs> Mercy is a must in the life of a Christian. The Lord may sit down with you and negotiate on certain things and he will tolerate certain things. But when it comes to mercy, he will not tolerate, he will not negotiate. It's mandatory to be merciful if you wish to be a true follower of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the sign of mercy is forgiveness. If you as a Christian are unable to forgive someone who has hurt you, you are not following in the footsteps of your Messiah, period. If you want to follow in the footprints of the Lord, you have to forgive those who have offended you, hurt you, gone against you, and given you nothing but hell. You need to forgive. If you say, I won't, Jesus will say, I don't know you. In this, he will never negotiate. It's a must. So do you want to see the Lord or not? Do you want to be rewarded by the Lord or not? Do you want to be with the Lord or not? It's up to you. When you forgive someone who has hurt you, you are not doing them a favor, you're doing yourself a favor. Not them. Remember this. If you want to live miserable, don't forgive. If you want to live happily ever after, forgive. Maybe the reverb slightly lower. Or maybe the volume, I don't know. Maybe the volume, right? When I'm merciful, when I'm merciful, I am imitating the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm imitating Him. I don't want to repeat this, it's in the previous uh, lectures. But this mercy, when, when the Lord fills me with His mercy, what is that doing to my heart? Blessed are the pure in heart. You see, mercy leads you to having a pure heart. But why do we need a pure heart? Because without a pure heart, I cannot see God. Blessed are those who are pure in the heart, for they shall see God. And we said about seeing God, meaning you get to know how God operates, how God functions. The problem is with the church of the 21st century, and I'm talking about church leaders like me, I'm not judging. If I judge, I'm judging myself before anyone else. The problem with the church leaders of the 21st century they talk about Jesus Christ, but they don't know him. Not all of them. Don't get me wrong. There are some wonderful leaders. There are some beautiful leaders. But, but some who hold influential position, authoritative position in the church, those who can make a difference in the church, Unfortunately, they talk about the Lord, but they don't know the Lord. You see, without a pure heart, I cannot see God. Meaning, I don't know how He thinks. I don't know how He functions. 
I don't know what he wants from me. If I don't know him, how can I serve him? I cannot serve a stranger. I can only serve someone I am familiar with. How do I get to know him? By having a pure heart. How do I get the pure heart? I need to be merciful. How do you be merciful? You need to be hungry and thirsty for good deeds, righteous deeds. Not evil deeds, righteous deeds. Now, to be hungry and thirsty for righteous deeds, you need to be meek, trusting the Lord. You need to let the Lord navigate your life. Don't do it your way, let Him do it His way. Because without the Lord, there is no good deeds. When the Lord works in you, then you can be hungry and thirsty for righteousness, which is the work of God. The work of God, only God can do when you allow Him to do it in you, and through you, by you, with you, and for you. And when you're meek, how do you, did you become meek trusting the Lord? You cried on every sin you've done against Him. And yet I'm a sinner, he showed me mercy. Yet I'm a sinner, he embraced me and cleansed me. Yet I'm a sinner, he never judged me. Yet I'm a sinner, he loved me. I said, I'll never ever find anyone that will love me the way this sweetheart does. His name is Jesus. Man, I adore this man. I love this man. I worship this man. I die for this man. I melt when I mention this man's name. I melt. For he is everything for me. It is without him I'm an orphan. It is without him I'm lost. It is without Him, I'm nothing. It is without Him, I'm dead. It is without Him, I am a piece of dust. But in Him, I am the Son of God. I am descending from the royal family. Not in England, in heaven of all heavens. In heaven of all heavens. In heaven of all heavens. Man, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. He knows it. I can't help it. He made me crazy. Some, anyway, I don't care, doesn't matter. <laughs> pure in heart. When you're pure in heart, you start, you look at the face of the Lord, you know what He wants from you. You hear his foot, foot, footsteps, you know exactly it's him. You just watch him move, you know exactly what he's expecting of you to do. You get to know what God is all about and you begin doing what he expects you, or what he expects you to do. You begin doing. Now, when you get to see God, you're a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, number, number seven. The peacemakers, the problem is, I cannot be a peacemaker in this world unless I get to know the peacemaker himself. And unless I know him, I will not be able to make peace in this peaceless world. I need to know what Jesus Christ is all about in order to know how to make peace because peace comes from him for he is the king of peace. If I don't get to know the king of peace, how will I be able to establish peace on earth where it doesn't exist? And we said, blessed are the peacemakers. The word make meaning peace does not exist on earth. Why? Because earth is placed in the bosom of Satan. This world is placed in the bosom of Satan. And Satan has no peace. That's why you look at the world. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what's happening in the world. It is all evil, isn't it? Isn't it, my beloved? Evil. Look at the countries. Look at the so-called governments. Look at the United Nations. Look. I pray and I ask the Lord Jesus to give me the UN for a day. I'll get the most powerful pressure clean machine. 
I'll gurney them all. I'll gurney. Gurney them all. Make the concrete shine, baby. Mr. Speaker, they need, uh, they need a wash. <laughs> Not a car wash, they need a wash. <laughs> Maybe we need to open up human <laughs> wash. <laughs> Not car wash. Please come on in. You need to make this peace because this world is, has no peace. It is all about fighting. It's all about rebellion, rebellious things. It's all about evil things. Why? Because Satan is ruling over it. Please wake up. You come to the Lord Jesus, no more fighting. If you truly, if you truly, if you truly have a true encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only true living God revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago, if you truly have an encounter with the Lord, you will fight no more. Even if everyone is going against you, even if everyone is trying to agitate you, even if everyone is trying to hurt you, you will snort it off. You look at them and you'll say, man, I feel sorry for you. I pray the Lord Jesus touches your hearts the way he touched my heart. No hard feelings, baby. You swore at me? That was honey. You told me off. That was a blessing. You ridiculed me. Man, I'm on cloud nine, baby. It doesn't matter, my sweetheart. You want to offend me? You think you're going to offend me? You think you're going to hurt me where you, you want to destroy my reputation, my name, whatever you want to do? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. And those who come and say, you're a saint. You're the most faithful person. You're the most wonderful person. It doesn't matter, my dear. It's not about me, my sweetheart. It's about the crown of glory, Jesus Christ. It's about Him. You love me, you hate me, all good. All good. It's about the Lord. Six foot one. Long tan skin. Browny, crispy hair still in the middle all the way to the shoulders. Short beard, still brownish. Still, because he's 33. Young man, after 2023 years later, he is still 33. He'll never age. He's stunning. And I always say, a guy, a Jewish guy, this good looking, that's a miracle. <laughs> he's just stunning for a Jewish guy. You look at him, you fall in love. Stunning, breathtaking. You see him, you see God. You see him, you see holiness. You see purity. You see light. You see sanctity. You see everything stunning. Stunning, 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 stunning. The moment you start making peace on earth, you are called the sons of God. The peacemakers are the sons of God. Wow, what a title, what a title. Sons of God. Now we come to our topic. The moment you start making peace on earth, verse 10 comes into play. What does verse 10 say? Verse 10 will say this. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The moment you start making peace on earth, you will be persecuted. You will be hated. You will be kicked out, punched, left, right, and center. And that was a sneeze, a testimony, and a stamp seal that what we say is biblical, is the truth. The moment you start making peace, persecution will come your way. Why? The world is placed in the bosom of Satan. 
Satan has no peace in him. He is the one who divides and conquers, as they say. Divide and conquer. Have you heard this saying? <laughs> That's from Satan. <laughs> divide and conquer so satan always comes to cause division never unity never because unity will come when there is love division will come when there is hatred jealousy envy all the bad ugly things so when you start making peace what will satan do he will get up and cause for certain people who follow him he will push them force them to go against you and begin to persecuting you in order to give up on making peace in order to give up um, why does Satan do that look fair is fair all right we're gonna speak simple English here fair is fair Everybody's got a business to run. Right? Satan has got a business to run. Everybody's got a business to run. Now, as a businessman, would you like to see your company go and bankrupt? Losing profitability? Of course not. You will try everything under the sun to make it profitable, successful, prosperous business. Now, Satan has got a business. His business in is to win the people to him and take him with him to hell. Eternal death condemnation so when you come carrying the light of the world Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you start making peace in this peaceless world Satan is losing business you're taking people away from him and giving them to Christ the King now Christ is becoming profitable Satan not like it so he's going to get up and say, oh, who do you think you are? Are you trying to cause damage to my profitable business? Do you know how much I sell my shares on the stock market? What's that street called in, um, in America? Wall Street. So Satan has got his shares on Wall Street. When he sees his share prices going down, losing people to the kingdom of heaven, to the Lord Jesus do you think he's not gonna come and fight you of course he will so he's gonna come and start saying but the Lord is saying blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake what did we say righteousness is everything that is of good origin what does this verse mean? Let us say it in a simple term. You're working in this company and you're doing your job to the best of your ability. You are a very loyal, faithful employee to your employer, to that company. You do your job wholeheartedly. There is no corruption, there is no under the table, everything is in the light. You're doing everything according to the rule book of that company and with faithfulness and loyalty. The other colleagues are not as loyal as you are. They want to make extra money. They want to twist a few things, falsify a few things and shove and push few things under the carpet you cannot accept such behavior so what is happening now you are becoming a thorn in their side you're becoming a stumbling stone for them you are suffocating them you're not letting them do as they please because every time they want to do something wrong you are the spotlight shining on that wrongdoings. So what will happen? Satan will come and say to those colleagues, get up and give him hell or give her hell. Have you ever worked somewhere and you really had it tough with the colleagues around you? Yes. Some of you maybe were forced to leave their job, resign from their jobs because they were 
persecuted so badly in their jobs they could not last any longer they ran away because they complained they went to their bosses everyone is corrupt <laughs> so when they went to their bosses complaining and whinging come to my rescue they realized that the, the boss is more corrupt than the other colleagues what do you do you can't stay there because you are persecuted you either be like them or they will kick you out when you are being persecuted for being a faithful person wherever you are at home at school at work wherever you are being persecuted for the job you're doing faithfully and loyally the Lord is saying blessed are you for the kingdom of heaven is yours what does it mean the kingdom of heaven is yours meaning the invitation is still open for you to be in the kingdom of heaven the door is not shut because wherever you were you did it from the heart faithfully and loyally God will reward you and will say the door to the kingdom of my heaven is still open for you if you are faithful but verse 11 blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake I Jesus Christ rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven there are two kind of persecutions one you are persecuted for the sake of doing a job faithfully and loyally this for this you are rewarded the kingdom of heaven is still yours i.e the invitation is still open and you will have the chance the opportunity to enter the kingdom of heaven and remain in it but if you are persecuted for the sake of jesus christ of nazareth rejoice and be exceedingly glad for your reward is great in heaven not in the kingdom of heaven in heaven when you are persecuted for the sake of the Lord Jesus the Lord says be exceedingly glad and rejoice for your reward is great in heaven not in the kingdom of heaven to understand the difference between heaven and the kingdom of heaven we go to first Peter chapter 3 verse 14 and then first Peter chapter 4 verse 14 do we have it on the screen can we have those verses on the screen please yep so let's look at first Peter 3 14 what does Saint Peter say in first Peter 3 14 but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake you are blessed so if you suffer for righteousness sake what is righteousness sake if you're be doing your job to the fullest being faithful being honest then if you're doing that you are blessed the kingdom of heaven is yours but let's look at peter first peter 4 14. look what saint peter is saying here but even if you should suffer for sorry if you are reproached for the name of christ blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of god rests upon you when you are persecuted for christ's sake the heaven the, your, your reward is great in heaven who is heaven god so when you're persecuted for doing a good deed the kingdom of heaven is yours but when you're persecuted for the sake of christ god is yours not the kingdom of heaven god himself will be your portion my goodness when we read in the gospel according to saint john chapter 11 we see this man being born blind he was born 
from his mother's womb blind. So in chapter 11, the Lord Jesus is walking with his 12 apostles. The 12 apostles stop once they saw that blind man sitting on the white side begging. They said, Lord, whose fault, whose sin was it for this man to be born blind? Was it his sin or his parents? Which one? He said, neither his nor his parents, but this man has been placed here for the glory of God. The Lord Jesus spits onto the ground and makes mud with that spit and then applies it on the blind man's eyes. And he says to him, go and wash in that pond. Shilucha, Shilucha in the proper pronunciation. Shilucha or Shilucha means the messenger. It was called the messenger pond. So when he went and washed his face, he regained his eyesight. When he regained his eyesight, what did the people of his own country, of his own town, his own people, what did they do to him? They cast him out. They persecuted him. Why? Because he said, this man called Jesus of Nazareth opened my eyes. They said, this man is a sinner. He breaks the law of God. He breaks Sabbath. He works on Sabbath. This man is a blasphemer. How can this sinner open the eyes of a blind person born blind? He said, well, I don't know. You go and ask him. But I know one thing. God does not hear the voice of a sinner. And yet you call this man a sinner. Well, this man opened my eyes. I don't know. You go and ask him. So what did they do? They told him off and they grabbed him, threw him outside the town. When they persecuted him, reviled him and kicked him out, who found him first? God. His own parents disowned him. When the Pharisees and the scribes came to his parents, they said, isn't this your son? Yes. Wasn't he born blind? Yes. Who opened his eyes? They were afraid to say Jesus, lest they be persecuted as well. They were afraid. They said, we don't know. He is a mature adult man. Ask him, why are you asking us? Wow. You see, some people, when it comes to persecution, they back off. <laughs> Prior to that, they are warriors. Prior to 2020, all church leaders were warriors. After 2020, <laughs> not many. Not many. It's easy to shout and yell and speak so strongly when you are free. But I just wonder, can you do the same when you are being choked by lockdowns and police come and knocking at your door? Whoa, it's scary now. The coppers are here. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. What happened? Let me tell you this. I'll say one thing about the Lord. May the Lord forgive me. We can say till kingdom comes, Lord, I love you. Or Lord, we love you. The Lord will look and will say, yeah, okay, no problem. Let me see if you truly love me. He will pick you up and put you in a hard, difficult situation. He's going to say, let me see if you're still going to love me or not. Talk is cheap. The Lord says, you can talk for as long as you want. It's cheap. I want to see action. I want to see these words into action, into play. Stop saying, I love you. Show me you love me. Stop saying it. Show it. Stop saying it. Show it. That's why only a few get to know the Lord. Not many.
I really feel sorry for some Christians where they speak with confidence about the Lord, yet they are little kids. Absolutely little kids. And believe you me, I'm saying it with love and humility. Because I just wonder what they will do under pressure. Not big pressure, a little tiny one. But the, what will they do? Are they going to be those warriors? Or are they going to just go back and be quiet? When, when this man was persecuted and he was cast out, the first one that met him and embraced him was the Lord God. When you are persecuted for my sake, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Blessed are you, you need to rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven and heaven is God himself. The Lord says, when you accept persecution for my sake, I will give you not only heaven, the kingdom of heaven, I'll give you myself. I'll give you myself. I will come with my own feet all the way to where you are and I will carry you and put you in the core of my heart then I'll show you wonders of this God no one had ever seen before because you accepted that persecution for my sake I Jesus I am a fair master I am a fair God I will never ever forget all the hardships you endured for my sake I never forget I reward you I give you myself the next time the Lord will come and say son come with me I want to show you something <sighs> stop being boastful about your doctorates my dear friends the only time you should boast when you say, I know the Lord, I don't just believe in Him, I know Him. Church leader, do you know the Lord? Don't tell me you went and studied at this university and you got your doctorates. Big deal. Satan can devour you and you won't even know what hit you if you've got your doctorate. If you don't put your head under the feet and the sandals of Jesus Christ, you have no chance, my dear friend, even if you're a pope. You have no chance. Satan is much smarter than you, much wiser than you. The only one who overcame Satan is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not the pope, not the cardinal, not the bishop, no one, the Lord. No wonder the church is in turmoil because church leaders of great influence positions they only speak about the Lord they don't know him I don't want to talk much because they might say oh look at this guy he's trying to be a show off or something I'm not please We need to pray for Pope Francis and the Catholic Church in general. And then we need to pray for every Pope, every Patriarch, and every church leader. Because what is happening in the church, very sad, very sad, very sad. If any church comes to this level and say that we need to embrace LGBTQRSTUVYZXY, I don't know what else, 
and it is absolutely normal and it's not against the biblical teachings that is no longer a church and that leader is not a leader anymore no matter who he is what he is I don't really give one penny there are things outside your jurisdiction church leader you are not above the Lord Jesus do you understand you're not and the Lord will reprimand don't ever think that Jesus Christ is all only love and only mercy no 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 he can be very harsh when he comes to punish oh yeah he can be very harsh and he's the only true powerful God ever in existence if you if something Satan is powerful Satan is nothing compared to what Jesus Christ of Nazareth can do nothing Satan is absolutely a little mouse when the line of Judah comes along he becomes a little mouse be gone Satan we need to withstand persecution not give in not the flood of the world enters the church and then the church becomes worldly doing what the world wants embracing what the world embraces imitating what the world imitates it is no longer a church it's a den of thieves it becomes a den of thieves the church needs to be the light not darkness the church needs to speak the truth not the lie the church needs to reflect represent Jesus Christ of Nazareth not Satan I'll step on Satan in Jesus mighty name and the hell with the world but we want to bring the world back to the Lord but for the world to come and impose dictate things that are worldly to the church over my dead body you only live once I will never die a coward enough of this nonsense man. now I'm really upset now um, honestly I don't know what's what's happening in the world seek not the world what's happening in the church is sick I mean the world has always been sick but the church to be this sick that is sickening you can you can marry the LGB and embrace the LGB well go and embrace them you son of a snake you're not enduring persecution where are you standing for the truth when are you gonna stand for the truth when and let me tell you this we're all Christians I don't care you're Catholic you're Orthodox whatever we're all Christians when we see anywhere in Christendom something going wrong we should all feel the pain the hurt don't say ah oh, this is happening in the Catholic Church I'm Orthodox I don't care No, you need to care and you need to pray and you need to ask the Lord Jesus to go and fix what's happening because the Catholic Church is another Christian branch we need to ask the owner of the church to revive it to re replenish it and to bring it back to her glorious days that I have to as a Christian feel upset angry hurt because it is my church as well they are Christians like me and even the orthodoxy world stop being fanatics fanaticism is not good it's not healthy it's ugly we only the, this is the only truth we hold the truth I just get a life man you don't hold nothing we have lost we have lost the true Christ 
That's why the church is in turmoil. Blessed are you when you are being persecuted. For my sake, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for I will give you myself. Who is this soul? Which is the soul that will receive Christ as the reward? Blessed is this soul. This is what you call a saint. Endured all persecutions, tolerated them, and till the end remained faithful to the Lord Jesus. For at the end, the reward of that soul is God himself. God will give you your, himself as a reward. There is no greater reward than this. It surpasses all heavens when God becomes your gift. Surpasses all heavens. Surpasses all heavens. Blessed are you when, you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. In heaven meaning I God will be your reward. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. When you look back in history, every single Christian that tried to live a life of Christ on earth, every single one of them were persecuted by their own church, by their own people, by the people of the world as well. But the first people who went against them were within their own circle. Your own church will go against you. Saint Nectarius persecuted by his own church. Padre Pio persecuted by his own church. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Lord's the Lord always tells the truth you cannot just give a blind eye to what the Lord Jesus is saying for his word is divine the Lord cannot say anything but the truth whatever the Lord says has to happen but he's saying blessed are you when they persecute you you know what I love about Padre Pio Out of all, you watch his movie, I pray you, you watch his movie one day, very soon. Out of all the things that he said throughout that movie, one thing touched me so deep. Oh. You see, the Vatican sent this clergyman to go and check this out. There is this monk priest in Rotondo Giovanni in this little village he is celebrating the mass for three hours on end no such thing in in the Catholic Church it's half an hour maximum what is he doing going against the Pope's will and wish who is this friar who is this priest monk who does he think he is so they sent a, a Vatican representative to go and investigate and then if he is in breach to be reprimanded He, Padre Pio was persecuted by this clergyman for years, for years, for years. He gave him hell. On the last day, Padre Pio, his lungs are collapsing. He is breathing through this oxygen mask. He can't, he is, that's it, that's his last day. He's extremely exhausted, tired, fatigued, everything is going wrong. This clergyman asked Padre Pio this. He said, who are you? He asked Padre Pio, who are you? Padre Pio looks at heaven. And the way he, he replies, stunning. He says, I wish I know who I am. For I am a mystery to my own self. Do you know what he was saying? I wish I know who I am. You asked me, who are you? I wish I knew who I was. 
if I knew who I was, I would have told you because I am a mystery to my own self. Now, this is a saintly talk. Because the closer, the closer you get to the Lord Jesus, the more you don't know who you are. Because the moment you are engulfed, the moment you are embraced, the moment you are devoured by the Lord Jesus with his love, with his passion, with everything, you will lose yourself. You won't even know what hit you. And so true, he's not making it up. He truly said it from the bottom of his heart because the closer we get to the Lord, we become a mystery to ourselves because all I remember once upon a time, I was that little kid playing in the street with the neighbor's kids. I used to play soccer. We had these little colored marbles. We were so innocent playing in the street. I didn't know any better. Look at me. I don't know who this is. When I look at that kid, what made that kid this person? I don't know, but I know one thing. This perfect God, perfect man. So don't ask me, who are you? I don't know, for I am a mystery to my own self. When you come to this level, no one can take you away from the Lord. No one. What Vatican? What Freemason? What secret societies? What world? Step on it all. <laughs> oh. 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 My beloveds, my beloveds, my beloveds, I beg you, boys, teenagers, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, daughters, if you're a teenager, you're in your 20s, you're engaged, you're single, you're married, please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. Stop for a moment and think deep, think wisely, and think with calmness. Don't be agitated. Don't let anyone agitate you. Hit on the brakes and stop for a moment and be very quiet and calm and ask yourself this question. What are you doing? Where are you heading? What are you trying to achieve? My friend called me yesterday and he said, let's go downtown. And we went downtown and I went clubbing. And actually, I stayed back till three, four o'clock in the morning. And we danced, we drank, we did whatever we did. We sniffed. <laughs> and we had so-called fun. And then I came back. Question yourself, ask yourself, what are you doing? Do you think this life is a joke? Do you think this life is cheap? Do you think this life is nothing? For me to gamble with it so easily? What are you doing? What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, my daughter? The Lord is still waiting for you and me and all of us. And he says, I love you. But a lot of times I am so lonely on the cross. A lot of times I am unheard. My voice is rejected. My voice is not wanted. I'm crying out from Calvary in pain, in agony, shredded to pieces, bleeding for you. I'm crying out to all of you saying, why are you leaving me alone? Look, look at the one who loves you the most. Why do you love the one who hates you the most and despise the one who loves you the most? Why are you running to Satan, running away from your Christ? Why, why, why? Why do you choose darkness over the light? Why do you choose love? Or why do you choose hatred over love? 
Why do you choose death over life? Why do you choose bitterness over sweetness? Why? Ask this yourself. What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you trying to achieve? Blessed are you when they revile you and say everything evil against, uh, against you for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for your reward is great in heaven. When you are persecuted for the sake of your Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus is all yours. All yours. All yours. I pray we stop going to the world and coming to Christ. I pray we stop going to the club and coming to the church. I pray we stop swearing and we start praising. I pray we stop reading the filth of the world and start reading the light of the world, the Holy Bible. I pray we stop going to Satan and start coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray we stop going to those dark alleys. I st we stop doing the wrong things under the sun. I pray, I pray we start coming and making Jesus happy for a change. I pray, I pray, I pray. I pray, my beloved. Let those knees go down to the ground. Let them touch the ground in worship. For Jesus is God and he is ought to be worshipped. He is worthy to be worshipped. He deserves to be worshipped. The moment you make peace, persecution begins. The moment you speak about love and unity, persecution begins. Your own people will go against you. Your own family will go against you. Your own church will go against you. It's a given. The Lord said it, he can't lie. Are you accepting what the Lord is offering you? You know what's the most beautiful thing the Lord can teach any one of us? I'll tell you this, and I'll leave you with it. Please pay attention. The Lord may come and give you something very precious. And he grants you that and you see that, you taste that, you live that. You know this is from the Lord. It's not a dream. It's not a fantasy. It's not some sort of an imagination. No, it's reality. God gave me this gift. But in the midst of all this, the Lord is testing you for one thing the Lord says I gave you this are you going to focus on what I gave you or is your focus going to be on the one who gave it to you I made you a bishop is your focus going to be on the bishophood on the throne or on this sweetheart which one Lord you made me a bishop and no matter what you make me, I beg you, Lord, don't let me pass the rank of that donkey of yours. Always make me your transportation vehicle. And since your transportation vehicle is a donkey because you don't like sitting in limousines like some do, and the red carpet rolled under their feet. You don't like that, Lord, your humble God. So since your limo is the donkey, please make me that donkey. I want to be that donkey. Because I don't care about the priesthood or the bishophood rank. 
I care about you more. I care about you more, Lord. You know, when the Lord sets you free, truly you are free. That's why it doesn't worry me. I have a throne or I have a gutter. At the gutter, it's beautiful. Sitting on the throne, doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's all the same. Because the place doesn't matter. It's the owner. It's the owner of the place that matters. That's why I don't care about going to heaven. I don't care about going to hell. All I care about one thing, I want to be with the Lord. If I'm with the Lord and He takes me to hell, then it's my heaven. Because wherever the Lord goes, it's heaven. Because heaven is not heaven, heaven is Him. He makes heaven, heaven. And without Christ, even if I go to heaven, it's hell. It is Christ who makes heaven, heaven. Then, drinking poison with you, I'll choose any time all day long than drinking honey with Satan. I'll drink poison with the Lord any time, but I will never drink honey with Satan. Love the Lord Jesus, and whatever has happened in your life, whoever has hurt you, whoever has gone against you, whoever offended you, whoever persecuted you, whether it be your own family, husband, wife, father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, relatives, friends, neighbors, whoever that person is, forgive them and hold on to Jesus Christ for your reward at the end will be great for Christ will be your portion at the end. Christ. The first time, for the first time coming to the Lord, I was poor. I walked into the church, I didn't even know how to make the sign of the cross, it's been too long. I don't even, I didn't even know how to pray. I haven't prayed for me for the last 40 years. I haven't prayed, I forgot. So I came Paul. The Lord filled me with his Holy Spirit. He started enlightening me gradually. It takes time. It's a life's journey. It's not an overnight uh, transformation. You don't just say, Lord, you're, you're my savior now and that's it, finished. No, it's a life journey. You need to live with the Lord every single day. Salvation is every single day. So, I came poor, he filled me. I started crying on the sins that broke his heart. I realized how beautiful he is, how loving he is, yet I broke his heart so many times. I cried for every time I broke his heart, I mourned. When I mourned, I began to trust in him, I became meek. Because I realized Yet I was a sinner, he loved me so much. It's impossible for anyone to love me as Christ does. I can't trust but no, no one but him. So I entrusted him with the most valuable thing I have, my spirit. I put it in the hand of the Lord. And then he made me hungry and thirsty for righteous deeds. For deeds that make God happy. It is not he who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but it is the one who does the will of my Father. Do doing the will of the Father is the righteousness, the righteous deeds. When I was hungry and thirsty for righteous deeds, God filled me with mercy. Because the more I did good deeds, the more I realized how merciful God is. Yet I was a piece of wreck. Look what he's done. Out of a sinner, he made a saint. Out of someone who was lost, he made me found. Out of someone who was dead, now I'm alive. You're so merciful, Lord. I need to be merciful like you. When I showed mercy, a pure heart was born in me, was created in me. 
That pure heart made me see how God works. I came to know him. We became familiar with one another. Now when Jesus talks, I could pick his voice from a million zillion voices. Satan can come and try to imitate the voice of Christ. I say, get lost. <laughs> you cannot deceive me. I know the voice of my sweetheart. We've lived for too long together, baby. I'll know him. I know the voice more of my sweetie Jesus. Now let me tell you, after this Satan will come and try to deceive me, okay? He will. But the Lord is with me. Who cares? Do you think I stand and talk because I'm wearing this outfit? No. Jesus is something else. Jesus is something else. My dear friend, the Lord loves you. You, you, yes, 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 yes. He loves you very much. Be strong. And the one behind you there, yes. Okay, don't worry, brother. It's been a long journey, but it's all good. Be strong. <sighs> Pure heart allows you to be a peacemaker. Peacemakers make you a son of God. And with all the privileges that are attached to this title, son of God, all the privileges. You know, as, as the son of God, you walk into heaven, not on heaven, not on earth. You walk... The, the most powerful angel in heaven, the archangel Michael, the warrior, yeah? You, you see him depicted with a sword. He's uh, fighting Satan and chopping Satan. This archangel, how powerful he is, he will come and serve you. He will come and salute you. Well, I'm a piece of dust, but I am the son of God. As the son of God, the most powerful angel will come and salute me and say, what can I do for you, sir? I'll say, um, <clears throat> Michael, <laughs> um, can I have a chocolate sundae? <laughs> and uh, if you're going uh, to uh, Marsharbel, please tell him to make me some tabbouleh. <laughs> Habib Albi. <laughs> the privileges of being the Son of God. The privileges. I'm not worthy to make tabule from our sherbel. Who am I to stand in his holy presence? I kiss his feet if he allows me. I kiss his feet. And all the saints equally. All the saints. Some are crying, that means time is up. When you make peace, persecution comes, but don't worry. Um, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I, I became a priest, I didn't want to be. Two years later, I got kicked out. <laughs> no, I was, uh, no, I was becoming a priest, I got kicked out. And then f five and a half, six years later, I became a priest. And then, two years after being a priest, I became a bishop. Two years after being a bishop, I got kicked out. I got kicked out when I was a deacon. I got kicked out when I was a bishop. When I was a deacon and I got kicked out, I was shattered. I did not eat, drink for one week. May God rest her soul in peace, my earthly mom. What a beautiful lady she was. I miss her dearly. I've lived with her all my life. She, she was also destroyed for me. She would come into the room. I did, I did not speak for a week. I did not blink for a week. I did not do anything for a week. I did not eat. I did not drink. I did not get out of the room for a week. I was this destroyed 
because I wanted to be a priest badly and I got deposed by the highest rank in the church that destroyed me as a deacon when I got deposed from the church as a bishop I went <laughs> not that I was happy being deposed no but I was happy because the Lord taught me not to worry yeah it's not about people it's about the Lord it's about the Lord because in those six years the Lord gave me what can carry me for eternities that's why nothing matters anymore it is all good in the church outside the church Saint Paul Saint Paul he said it matters not whether we are naked or clothed respected or, or dishonored whether we are trampled underfoot or placed in high we, it doesn't matter it is all good because I found the Lord I found the Lord nothing takes me away from the Lord no hardships no sword no persecution no nakedness no, no nothing nothing ah Saint Paul and my sweetheart my sweetheart I love this saint badly I love this saint ask the Lord to show you the way love the Lord ask him to give you his love every good gift comes from the good God Jesus Christ of Nazareth you need to ask for it say Lord make me a better person I want to be closer it's not enough if I am sitting at your feet it's not good enough I want to sit at your right hand it's not good enough I want to sit in the core of your heart and it's not good enough I want to be you all of you I want to be you after that whatever happens who cares believe me who cares it's all good you failed the exam you passed the exam who cares you married Rachel you, you married Elizabeth who uh, you have to care if you marry Elizabeth she's a good girl Elizabeth who cares your business is doing well not doing well leave everything in the Lord's capable hands the hands, the very hands that were pierced for you and I. Leave everything in those capable hands. And my daughter, I beg you, don't cry if John leaves you. Who cares? Got my brish, ash on his head. John goes, Yohanna comes. It's the same name anyway. Sarkis will come. Sarkis is much more handsome than Jonah. Doesn't matter. Don't say I'm going to die if John doesn't marry me. Leave it. <laughs> Leave everything in the Lord's capable hands. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now we're going to listen to our beloved Jacqueline for another hymn. Before I put her to sleep with my long talks. She's laughing. Oh, do huh? I love you talking. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> All right, we can listen to Jacqueline. Comes when Jesus Christ is made Lord and Savior. While we pray, the Lord Jesus, the rightful owner of the land, because there is a prophecy in Isaiah that says, The land is yours, O Emmanuel. So the land, if you want to biblically look at the land, it is neither the Israelis nor the Palestinians. It belongs to Emmanuel, God with us, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I pray to the rightful owner of the land, Emmanuel, to touch the hearts of the people there and to comfort them and uh, to bring them into some sort of a, a, um, uh, an agreement some sort of a tolerance where they can tolerate one another because innocent children people are being killed for absolute nonsense 
All these ideologies, I don't want to talk, but all these ideologies are earthly, empty vanity, fighting over land, and the land at the end will be my grave. Fighting for something that will swallow me at the end. Isn't that funny? It's very sad. Killing one another for something that is a grave. This is the truth of the matter. That land is nothing but a grave for everyone who is a human being. I pray the Lord Jesus touches the hearts of the Israelis and the Palestinians. Okay, this is your land. Okay, this is your portion, Habibi. <laughs> and this is your portion, uh, Habibi. <laughs> Uh, shalom <laughs> and let's make peace man enough enough it's all right israel and palestine i'll give you my house that i'm living in if you can take it if you like start stop fighting i'll give you my home believe me i'll give you my home because it's not mine it's the lord's and the lord is generous he loves everyone so you can take the house. I live in Fairfield, New South Wales, 2165. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no, no, I live in Fairfield, New South Wales, 2165. And if you want to call me on my number, I'll give you the number of the house and you can come and have it. Believe me. I will, I will sleep in the street if the Israelis and the Palestinians stop fighting. I will sleep in the street. I accept. Stop fighting. I'll own no house. I will live in the street. Just stop fighting. I pray the Lord touches the hearts. There is no one more, there's no one like Jesus Christ, man. Like just find the Lord in your life, man. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. I encourage you. A um, couple of announcements. But that was a beautiful hymn. Uh, Jack, put your hands together for Jacqueline, please. I don't know if you, if you share this with me, but you know, like if you sing a hymn, like for example, in English only or in Arabic only or in Greek only, it's beautiful. But you know how it's, it's amazing when you mix the languages together in one hymn. Isn't that amazing? Like for me, that was stunning. Like uh, Arabic here, uh, English here, J J Hebrew here, uh, Shalom Habibi, you know, beautiful, beautiful. I wanted to sing in Aramaic next time, huh? so uh, like we speak Aramaic, you know. Girl, eat your heart out. My hair is longer than yours. <laughs> Do you see, like, you know, when, when girls with long hair, is like they're talking, like the friend is talking and she is busy with her hair. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, Father, next time we'll sing in Serioyo. Serioyo. Oh, Serioyo, Habib Albi. Yeah, go Serioyo. Yes. <laughs> عود نوراني وين طور عبدين اه ستانينغ مان ستانينغ ستانينغ اي لاف سيريايو اي لاف سيريايو ناو ذا سيرياك اورثودوكس تشيرش اند وير وير وان وين اي وين اي ايفر ليسن اور اتند ا سيريان اورثودوكس تشيرش اور ليسن تو ليرجي سيرفيس اور اني هيمز ام ان هيفن ستريت اواي اوتوماتيكلي ام ان هيفن ذس از هوم ذس از هوم ستانينغ all right, very quickly. A um, couple of announcements. Oh, we're going to Arizona, America. The bishop is going. Um, <clears throat> there will be a Bible preach session held in Arizona. This is the people of Arizona and America in general. Uh, so we're coming to Arizona. There will be a Bible preach session held on Friday, December 1st, or the 1st of December uh, at 6 p.m. Um, I think it's pronounced Chatolux Event Venue. That's the location. Uh, Chatolux Event Venue. Uh, the address is 1175 East Lawn Cactus Drive, Phoenix, Arizona. It's on the screen, the flyer. One thing I have to say, we did upload this flyer last night with a different address. 
Um, today we have re-uploaded re the flyer with a different address uh, because from last night till now the people in Arizona called us personally and they said looks like there's gonna be a lot of people attending the first location was not big enough to cater for the people so now we have so we have found a bigger venue hopefully it will be enough um, to cater for the people because inquiries calls were left right and center and apparently even some people were inquiring from different states they want to fly to Arizona from different states within America to come and see this good old looking bishop mate so to my beautiful people in America I love you I miss you I haven't been to America since the so-called pandemic came about in 2020 so I used to go at least three times a year to America and different states between Arizona Chicago and, and California so it's been now about what is it almost four years um, so I'm really miss you guys but I'm looking forward to seeing you because I love you so much and I miss you very very much so and I hope uh, Donald Trump um, will win the elections next year um, yeah I'll get the green card so um, please I'd love to see you it is in Arizona um, uh, Chad Lux event venue 1175 East Lawn Cactus Drive Phoenix it's on Friday December the 1st December the 1st Friday 6 p.m. sharp I'm looking forward to seeing you all for a beautiful Bible preach session there uh, our youth ministry gathering will be on Saturday the 25th of November this month at 12 midday lunchtime here at the church this is for 18 plus if you haven't enrolled in this youth ministry you can come on the day and enroll it is Saturday the 25th of November at 12 lunchtime uh, sharp here at the church carols by candlelight is being held on Saturday the 9th of December at 4 p.m. open for families with children and then uh, our beautiful choirs will uh, be singing in three languages English Arabic and Assyrian uh, starting at probably 6 30 p.m. carols by candlelight that'll be on Saturday the 9th of December it, it, it is open from 4 p.m. for families with children and even after for two hours and a half then 6 30 p.m. the carol um, hymns will see, will start the children will be looked after so mom and dad you don't need to worry you just come into the church the kids will be looked after throughout the duration um, the um, children family slash family sponsorship is going really well we just re we recently opened this door for people to sponsor a child or a family overseas and I'm still urging you to come and enroll in this and let us put our hands together in the hand of the Lord Jesus help a child help a family that is struggling overseas I want to see I want to see over a thousand people we, we're getting pretty close to thousand people enrolled as sponsors yes about 800 I'm not sure something like that I haven't I've, I've, I've uh, not exactly sure but we're getting pretty close so let's see the number exceeding a thousand people uh, worldwide and I pray it's gonna be 10,000 people the more we can help and it could be a dollar could be any amount whatever you can whatever you can can we put that flyer is it on the screen yes sponsoring a child or a family overseas um, the details are there if you want to take a screenshot of it um, people at home please look at this flyer share this flyer with everyone you know on your social media platforms encourage them to participate and partake in this great deed as you know we've been to Syria Lebanon and Turkey a couple of months ago people are struggling this is just three countries there are people everywhere struggling children struggling uh, currently as we speak we look after just over 300 kids in 10 different countries and over 800 families in over 10 different countries every single month we send them financial help so we need your support your continuous support your generous support this is on a monthly basis whatever you can how much ever you can and if you cannot 
donate any you know money please pray for this cause because it is a great cause and it is for a great reason we need to help people that are truly 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 struggling wherever they are and whoever they are so the sponsorship um, I'm not sure um, if there is Father Isaac can you check if uh, R Russia Daniel is here or not because um, they, they were supposed to you know be here if they are here please do see uh, Russia Daniel for this sponsorship um, she is um, one of the team members and what we call the Good Samaritan Aid Society um, so if she is not present just see one of the youth group committee members for any information or further information there are forms you can take for this sponsorship uh, the other thing is one jesus care uh, is nahrain here one jesus care we've recently launched this uh, initiative again uh, the church is doing this uh, this is an ndis service uh, this is an ndis service call her here please yep uh, where we look after people um, who need to be looked after. So, I can say this. Whatever proceeds come out of this, this is for the church. Whatever proceeds come out of this will go towards helping people. It is nothing of personal benefit or even going to the church or putting it in the church account. None of that. Whatever proceeds come from this NDIS service will be going to helping people within Australia and also outside. We need, Naren, please do come here. We need to also give back to our beloved country, Australia. We should never lose track of our country. We love Australia, we pray for Australia, and we are proud to be an Aussie, even if I'm, don't look it. <laughs> but as they say, don't judge the book by its cover. I may not look from outside an Aussie, but I'm a fair income down under, true blue bite, down under from in within. Let's put the prawns on the barbie, and I had a meat pie, which is a bush tucker. <laughs> so, I am an Aussie, I'm a, proud, I'm, I'm a very proud Aussie. I will never forget this country that embraced me. I may disagree with the so-called government, but that doesn't mean I don't love my country. My country's got nothing to do with government. Government can be puppets, but my country is a beautiful, blessed country. I love it. I ask the Lord to bless this nation and bring people of good conscience and good morals to be leaders in this country. Amen? Amen. So, NDIS services we are providers. Nahrain is the director of this NDIS service. Uh, she runs after this um, section. Please, if you know any people that need this service, do see Nahrain, your sister in Christ. And as I said, all proceeds will go to helping people here in Australia and also abroad. This is Nahrain, our beautiful daughter. So please do see her for NDIS services uh, wherever it is needed. If you know people that need that service, see her. And we're also looking for people that are willing to work for the church in this NDIS sector. We're looking for workers as well. So please do see Nahren afterwards. Thank you so much. God bless you and bless the work you're doing. And now we stand for the finale prayer.